From the petals of a red rose to the spiral structure of galaxies, beauty can be found everywhere. But what makes something beautiful? Is it in the eye of the beholder? Or is there actually some reason, some recipe that makes something appear attractive? Let's strip the concept of beauty right down to this. Take this postcard and compare it to these two. Which one is more, well, beautiful? 99 times out of 100 people will say it's the middle one. The first is too square, the last too long, but the middle one is just right. There's a particular proportion between large and small and when this proportion is right it just looks beautiful. This special proportion, the relation between one length and another, is called the golden ratio, or phi, and spookily enough, it crops up in a multitude of places. It has been used in design, art and architecture since antiquity, having been discovered and rediscovered many times throughout human history. This one special number basically guarantees whatever it's used in will be aesthetically pleasing, and designers, architects and artists have exploited this fact, using it to their advantage. So where did it come from? The ancient Greeks loved the ideal. The idea of a perfect line, a perfect shape, a perfect ratio. A nuclear of Alexandra is believed to have been the first to have discovered it in 300 BC, when he divided a line into two bits. These bits had a special relation though, that if the whole line was one, the bigger segment would be about two thirds, as well as if the bigger bit was one, the smaller segment would be about two thirds, the golden ratio. And this is the only number for which this applies. It also has another strange mathematical property. When you divide the number one by this, this, this quantity, then it's equal to one plus the same number. 1 divided by 0.618 is equal to 1.618. Peculiarly enough, the golden ratio can also be found hidden inside a simple sequence of numbers that was discovered in the 13th century by a man named Leonardo Fibonacci. Fibonacci series is the other side of the coin of the golden proportion. It's a bunch of numbers, we write them in a list, and if you want to work out the next number in this list, you take the two previous numbers in the list and you add them together. So for example, the first two numbers are 1, then 1, then 2, then 3, then 5, and then 8. And you can work out the rest yourself. So the golden ratio is 1 plus the square root of 5 all divided by 2. It's about 1.6 something or other. And it turns out that the ratio of successive terms in the Fibonacci sequence approaches that golden ratio as you go to infinity. So you start off with 1 over 1 is 1, which is not terribly close. And then you'll have 2 over 1, which is 2, which is a bit too big. And then 3 over 2 is 1.5, which is a bit too small. And as you keep going, it gets closer and closer to this 1 plus root 5 over 2. As well as finding it in design, making things look beautiful, it also crops up remarkably often in nature. The classic example is the sunflower head. The seeds are in a spiral and the scientists have taken the sunflower head and measured the number of spirals this way and the number of spirals that way. And they found that they were adjacent terms in the Fibonacci series. In this way, the golden ratio can also be found in pine cones, leaf arrangements and petals on flowers. Then, if we look again at our golden rectangle... And if we chop out a unit square from this rectangle, we chop out a square, we're left with, well, another rectangle. And the golden ratio is the number such that that new rectangle is exactly the same shape as the original rectangle except scaled down. The amount that it's scaled down by, the amount that you zoom out by, so to speak, is exactly this golden ratio. If you join up all the squares in the golden rectangles, you create a golden spiral, and this can be found in hundreds of places in nature.
Leonardo da Vinci fell in love with this concept and he and his mentor Pacioli wrote a book called The Divine Proportion because wherever they looked they found this wonderful proportion in the beauty of nature. He used it in the ratios of his artwork, including for the proportions of human figures, having extensively studied proportions in the body. He also said it applied to the face. So, in particular, a human face is, is an example where people feel that the golden ratio expresses some sense of perfection. I suppose you've heard that the most attractive people have symmetrical faces, but faces with proportions of this golden mean Naturally beautiful people, in fact, have faces littered with proportions of phi. It's obvious to you or me which of these faces is more attractive. We're human, but here's why. This golden mask, made up of many golden proportions, fits better to the people that are more naturally beautiful. It seems that everywhere we look, this number can be found. From time between heartbeats to fluctuations in the stock market, it lurks in patterns all around us without us even knowing. There's no other ratio like it. There's nothing like it. This is inherent in the beauty of nature. It's perfection. Unbelievable. It's beautiful. It's magical. It's phenomenal fi.